Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Pokemon Black. I'm your host, Pokemon Gamer. In the last episode, we headed out to Undela Bay, took a dip in the ocean, managed to find the Abyssal Ruins, um, where all of the Arceus plates can be found, among um, other things, in the form of relic items that you can sell for a very good price to someone that lives in Undela Town. Um, so you notice that we started outside this time. The reason for this is because we screwed up um, in the last episode on how to get to the very end in order to get the most expensive item found in this place. That if you want, um, you know, money and whatnot, you're going to want to come out and go out of your way to get this. So when it comes to this first floor, just be sure to follow how I'm doing this because um, that's kind of how it was on the little map thing that I was using because um, I remembered that. Um, there were multiple floors and whatnot. So once you get to hit this one area, you see the thing move. Now the thing I didn't mention in the last episode because I didn't actually remember it is um, you need two other HMs other than dive obviously to get through this place. The first is, well not HMs, one HM and one move that used to be an HM. And that would be flash and strength. Um, you need both of them to get through or get past this part. <laughs> Excuse me. You need flash for this area, and you need strength for the final area. So I ended up having to get Verizion out of the PC, which is part of the reason why I also started outside. Um, so Verizion has access to both flash and strength. I'm probably going to have to give it cut as well off screen and put it back in my party as of the next episode because um, once we're done here, we're heading north, and there's some areas where you can use strength to get some really good items as well as um, cut to get some other interesting stuff as well. Um, this room I didn't remember off the top of my head. The other two rooms I kind of remembered just bing bang boom right off the top of my head. So um, yeah, and I almost like messed up in here. I tried not to waste as many steps as I possibly could, but I mean, so this is the one that you need to use strength on. Um, it'll push it over to the right and then you'll be able to go into that one area which will teleport you upwards. And that's where you will be able to find the relic crown. Um, it'll be literally the only item in the room, um, and this item is worth a lot of money. The relic statues that you find, I think there's like maybe two relic statues, um, they're worth, they're the second most expensive item at I think 200 grand each. Um, the relic clown, or relic crown, not relic clown, I don't know why that kind of just, like, really, it kind of just tongue-tied everything together but whatever um, the relic crown is um, 300 and the statues are 200 um, I'm sure that you've already noticed that we aren't going back in the reason for that again is we really don't need the plates you know that they're all there if you need specific plates or whatever you can just find them there um, and on top of that if I try to go through it and get every single item <sighs> we would probably be in there for about another episode and a half just because we'd keep getting thrown out and then we'd have to go back in and try to find the exact area we were just at so that way we could get more items. That's why there's multiple entrances by the way. Um, there's like four entrances that you can go through. Um, the one that we entered is the one I think that you are mandatory to enter because I think I, I, the other ones just don't work. Something like that. I'm not entirely sure but um, anyway that's what I read. So, I've always used that entrance anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But, um, yeah, anyway, since it's a new day, we can rebattle this guy. I figured, why not? We're coming here to sell off a few items anyways. But there's also the fact that it triggers something else after the battle, um, which you'll see in a moment. Because, obviously, Whimsicott can just break Weasel's face all day. So, I mean, yeah. Anyways, oh, you seem to be having fun. Remember how I mentioned in the last episode how there was also a female? Well, here you go. She's right here. She appears, I think, after the first time you beat, um, what's his name? It could be wrong, and it could be just random or something, but, um, yeah. So, you will also be able to battle her once a day as well. So, I mean, that's useful. You also get a decent amount of money from, the, uh, from battling both of these two. So, I mean, it's kind of a thing. Teddy Ursa did a lot of damage for its level. I mean, I, I don't know if it had, like, a good nature or something. I mean, I don't really know how that works with the AI, whether they have, like, the most amazing nature in IVs, or if they're, just, like, randomized as well, to the point that, um, it kind of makes things a little more level, quote-unquote, for the player, because obviously getting good IVs, just because, is not something that's easy to do in the game. So, I mean... But, I don't know. Oh, lord. 
this is becoming unbearable. It's getting to that point where summer is practically already here, and it's already like, I don't know, I think it's supposed to be like 80 something degrees today, or it's supposed to feel like 80 degrees. Um, I don't know. I guess I don't, I guess now that I think about it, I should probably mention this. Apparently Pokemon Get, or like the Get TV Pokemon program, um, Apparently Koro Koro or someone announced that they are going to be doing a um, lengthy version of like a footage type of thing for Omega Sapphire or Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. But um thing is, I mean the first quote unquote reveal was a major letdown, so I mean <clears throat> So that relic statue, two hundred thousand. So, I mean, you saw that we just made a shit ton of money for no reason, basically. So, yeah, it's worth picking up those other items. I really don't feel like selling all the other ones, because we really don't care about money in this game, per se. I mean, we already have, like, 700 grand, which is more than enough, pretty much, to get you through the entire game. Um, and then some, of course. But, I mean, if you need the extra cash to, you know, like, get your proteins and whatnot for EV training whenever you play competitive, you know, X, or not X and Y, but, like, black and white shit, then, I mean, you know, but, um, yeah. Just something that I figure, you know, it'll just be useful for that, I suppose, which is partly why I wanted to show everyone at least how to get to the Relic Crown before we got out of the Abyssal Ruins, but, um, yeah. Recently, I've been listening to a lot of music, by the way. <clears throat> and by a lot of music, I mean, like, actual video game music. Um, I forget the guy's name. He's, like, Enix or something like that. Uh, he has a lot of stuff uploaded. Um, he had put up a video, apparently, last month, around this time, actually. I think it was, like, the 6th or 5th of May. Um, and he had did a, like, top 10 list of his favorite songs from... Um, or like soundtracks from Ruby Sapphire. I don't know if Emerald was quote unquote a part of that. Of course, it's all Generation 3, so I'm sure all the music is basically the same, anyways. But, um, yeah, like, when it comes to music, this is something that I'm actually very, very interested in. Um, partly because Generation 3 actually had a lot of good, um, soundtracks, music, whatever. Um, the trainer battle wasn't bad. I loved the Team Aqua and Team Magma music. That, that was absolutely brilliant, in my opinion. Um, I really don't know if they could really do much better than that outside of the champion music. The gym leader music wasn't half bad either, but like whenever it comes to like all the music in the entire game in general, my favorites probably have to be the Team Aqua and Team Magma music as well as the champion music. Um, I kind of can't wait to find out what they sound like being remastered. Um, another thing is, if they are really going to like actually keep their word this time and do a major reveal for Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby, um, we're not only going to we're more than likely going to get a taste of what some of the music sounds like. We'll probably find out what the you know you know the how do I put it the protagonists are going to look like. Um, maybe even like the updated designs for Magma and Aqua and you know all that other crap. Um, so I mean I, I'm really curious to see like parts of the actual game, not just Kyogre and Groudon coming out of the water, probably in Zootopolis City where they're fighting one another and their Mayquaz is like oh nah and then just comes down and interrupts them like they did in Emerald. Um, but I mean like it's just something that I'm really looking forward to. I want to see some of the actual parts of the game I want to see, or not see, but hear, like the, the new music that they're going to implement. I'm pretty sure they're going to showcase something like maybe the rival battle, what your rival will look like, what you will look like, um, maybe some of the updated areas, stuff like that. Um, I'm not sure, maybe they'll show like the Team Aqua and Team Magma hideouts or something, like what they look like when they're updated, things like that. I, I really don't know. Um, I'm sure that they're also going to announce some of the features that were in like Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald that might be returning. An example would be again the secret bases, things like that. Maybe the older versions of the contests because again they're different from like all the other generation contests that we've had, both in Black and White and in Generation Four, of course. So I mean, anyway, 
I'm, I'm kind of just gonna get off the Alpha Sapphire maybe we and everything for a second. You all saw that there was a cut tree there. Um, again, we don't have cut on our like on our team, so I mean that's the thing. But you do want to come up here, and the reason why is if you use Strength here, you can get the TM for Psychic if I remember correctly. Definitely worth coming to get. Um, and I will be doing that in the next episode as well because it's a TM that I think I need to give to at least one or two of my Pokemon. Um, at least one, if I'm not mistaken, but it, whatever, it's still an excellent TM to get. I highly recommend you get it. So, just kind of felt like adding that in real quick. Um, so, you're back on the Alpha Sapphire and the Mega Ruby thing. Um, there's, they have to show like something big. They have to have like something that'll leave us wanting to see more. They'll have to leave us with something that gives us something that we obviously haven't had already, which is pretty much anything at this point, because again, all we saw was Kyogre and Groudon coming out of the water. I don't think we saw anything else really. And there's kids outside screaming. Um but yeah, I don't think that we've really seen much of anything else. And like we kinda need something else because that reveal was just terrible. The first reveal, quote unquote, was just absolutely awful. There was nothing really, and it was a huge waste of time. And if they're planning on doing something lackluster like this again, it's going to make a lot of people angry. Um, I feel like I should have also mentioned this. If you're actually curious about watching it, like if you're going to try and find someone streaming it or something, um, it's going to be up in like nine days, I think. Um, uh, it's gonna be a week from this Sunday, so I mean that's a, that's a thing. Um, I mean I don't know. It, it gives them plenty of time, I guess, to decide whether or not they're going to actually, you know, disappoint a lot of people or make a lot of people very hyped. I mean, there's a lot of people that are hyped for trumpets and sea roots and all that other happy crap, and I mean we're kind of just sitting here. I mean, waiting for something. Um, honestly, if I if I really can, I'm gonna try my best to do this. Um, whenever I get my capture card, it's gonna be one of the things I definitely will be let's playing. Of course, I know we've already covered Hoenn, but I mean, new generation, gotta you gotta do it. I mean, it's kind of weird in the sense that basically Generation Three is not only the one to get one remake, but it's gotten two. I don't think that any other generation has gotten two remakes. Um, generation one had, I guess if you count like yellow being remade into like, you know, red, or well, I guess like when it comes to Japan, green and then red and blue, but I don't really consider that considering um, yellow is kind of different in the sense that you have a Pokemon following you around, you're, you have a set starter, things like that. Um, so I don't really count that, of course, and Generation 1 only had Fire Red and Leaf Green as re or remakes. I almost said reprints because thinking of Yu-Gi-Oh here. Um, Generation 2... Oh, Generation 2, yeah. Generation 2 had double remakes, too. They had um, Gold, Silver, and then Crystal came out for a different console. And then they had, um, you know, Heart Gold, Soul Silver, which are things as well. So yeah, the, I guess there's two generations that have gotten something like this. Um, obviously, Generation 5 has not yet, because obviously they had Black and White and then Black and White 2, which were all in the same generation, of course. And then, of course, Generation 6 is already currently new, so there's no reason to remake it, of course. Um, so that's kind of thing. I also don't know if I've ever mentioned this, but apparently... Um, Game Freak or Nintendo or someone, I can't remember who, trademarked the name Delta, I think it was Delta Emerald or something like that. I don't know if I've covered that or not yet. Um, so we might be seeing more than two games for Hoenn, um, which would be kind of interesting. I don't really see a point in making Emerald unless they're going to be putting things in that specifically that the other two games do not have, meaning a further extension of some of the uh, Mega Evolutions that we don't already have. We already know that there's probably a bunch of other Mega Evolutions that we just haven't gotten yet and we haven't found in the code of the games for X and Y yet. So, who knows? There could be another... There could be technically three Hoenn games instead of just two. Which would be interesting, I suppose, but I don't really see much point to it either. Um, but I mean, I'm not really complaining either way. If we get it, we get it. So, I mean, whatever. Um, so... 
I, I really don't know what else to say about it. I'm just hoping that Pokemon Get or Get TV or whatever just doesn't let us down again. Anyways, considering we're pretty much out of time, I guess I should start doing this now. Um, in the next episode, we're going to continue on this route, and hopefully we can make it to the next town, which is just a little further north, or yeah, north of here. So, um, yeah, that's something to look forward to. So, if you haven't already, don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and until next time, this is the Pokegamer, signing out.